Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. Sancho, I, I'm sure people like getting that uh, that view of your butt to start this video off. Good lord. Now come on, be nice. Where was I? It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization there. A little bit chilly still, maybe two more frosty nights at Bugs in a Jar Farm, but it is now Tuesday, May 11th, 2021, and uh, good lord guys, it is no challenge being a chronicler of the collapse in the mainstream media today, or at least at midnight last night when I checked in. Uh, all sorts of stories right here in the mainstream media about uh, the collapse of various things on this planet. We're going to start with coral reefs. And I got like six stories to touch on. Can't get very deep into anyone. The number one story on Yahoo News today, coral reefs could stop growing in 10 years unless greenhouse gases are significantly reduced. Yes, the fate of coral reefs around the world remains grim, remains grim, should global warming continue at its current rate, according to new research. Coral reefs will stop growing in the next decade or so unless a significant reduction in greenhouse gases is achieved. A new study published yesterday in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science suggests. Uh, anyway, they break all this down between ocean warming and acidification, which are posing increasing threats to underwater ecosystem. Um, I think we've heard all this before. Now, of course, uh, being a doomer, I would rewrite this headline. Coral reefs stopped growing. When did coral reefs stop growing for all intents and purposes? Maybe 10 years ago. And uh, unless greenhouse gases are significantly reduced and Guys, I am all for reducing <clears throat> greenhouse gas emissions, but anybody at this point thinking that reducing greenhouse gas emissions is going <clears throat> to stop uh, certainly ocean acidification in its tracks. I uh, got some bad news for you. Uh, yes, anyway. Ocean acidification is one of the many things baked into the cake that has nothing to do with stopping greenhouse gas emissions. All right, we're going to go back to the oasis of freedom known as the great state of Florida, <coughs> where I just left. So I guess it has finally happened <coughs> that Florida releases genetically modified mosquitoes in hopes to reduce spread of disease. Yes, genetically modified mosquitoes have, have been released for the first time in the United States, taking flight in the Florida Keys in a pilot program intended to reduce the spread of deadly diseases such as dengue, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. I don't know if, I don't think anywhere in this story, have they recorded how many cases of dengue fever, yellow fever, and the Zika virus, if you add all three of those together and put them, how many people in the Florida Keys have gotten any of these things? in the last 10 years, but uh, I guess <clears throat> however many it was told the state of Florida we need to release, I think it's 750 million 
of these things, uh, <clears throat> these little Frankenstein mosquitoes. Uh, okay, they had a, an initial release of 12,000. Uh, later this year, tens of millions more of the genetically modified mosquitoes will fan out across the region. Uh, there you go. Uh, breaking on this. So what are the uh, anti-mosquitoes? Environmentalists like Barry Ray, who heads the Florida Keys Environmental Coalition, are not persuaded by the regulatory approval process. He says it was haphazard and leaves too many questions unanswered. <clears throat> you are going to ask the people in our community to be sacrificial lambs. Yes. Uh, here's a weird one. There have also been concerns that because the genetically altered females are originally exposed to the antibiotic tetracycline, it could increase the chances of antibiotic resistant infections in humans. Well, this changes everything, guys. Uh, all right, with that one sentence, I am now cheering on the, uh, the release of 750 million Frankenstein mosquitoes in the uh, Florida Keys. Anything we can do to increase antibiotic uh, resistance in humans has my vote. So I am now a strong proponent of Franken mosquitoes. You bring on those Frankenstein mosquitoes spreading antibiotic resistance in humans. <clears throat> anyway, guys, honestly, my, my reaction on this one is kind of like my reaction on so many other things. I honestly believe uh, there is probably about a one in a billion chance that uh, this thing is going to jump the shark into other species of mosquitoes or insects or whatever and just wipe out the entire basis of the food chain in the state of Florida, which is what mosquitoes are. Uh, you know, but, but you, you keep throwing uh, enough you-know-what against the wall with this and, and some is going to stick it eventually we're going to have an absolute ecological disaster. Is it going to be this one? <clears throat> Who knows? Uh, it's coming. <clears throat> anyway, but we got to move on. We're going to go from Florida to California, <coughs> where California governor declares drought emergency in 41 counties. California Governor Gavin Newsom yesterday issued an expanded, quote, drought emergency proclamation <clears throat> for 41 of the state's 58 counties, citing above average temperatures and dry conditions for April and May. Uh, <clears throat> Newsom directed the state's water board to consider modifying requirements for reservoir releases and take other conservation measures. Yes, good luck. Um, <clears throat> the move was criticized by Save California Salmon, a wildlife protection group that accused Newsom of favoring <coughs> big agricultural interest. Quoting uh, this woman whose name I cannot pronounce from the salmon huggers, quote, poor water management during the last drought led to a 
to 90 percent of these salmon dying and toxic algae blooms in cities' water supplies. California's antiquated water rights systems leaves cities and the environment high and dry while almonds get clean water. And um, who was, I guess it was Osama telling me about avocados. That he and I, what did I saw? What did you say, brother? That 88 gallons of water supposedly going into every avocado or something like that. I think it's one gallon of water per almond. Uh, let's see. The snow melt this year was 40% below average. California depends on snow melt in the spring to replenish its streams and reservoirs. Good luck. It is it is going to be an absolute apocalypse in uh, in California this summer. The summer of 2021. Good Lord why anyone is still hanging out all right, but we're going to go over to China where, hallelujah, we finally have, this is the same good news we had from our own country last week, the same story coming out of China, hallelujah, we do have some good news in the atmosphere. Would you sit down, please, and chill, chill, are you chilled? Thank you. China 2020 census shows slowest population growth since one child policy. Hallelujah. Many versions of this story all over the mainstream media. China's population growth in the decade between 2010 and 2020 slumped to the least since a one-child policy was introduced in the late 1970s, adding pressure on Beijing to boost incentives to couples to have more babies and avert an irreversible decline. Yes, the population of mainland China in the decade increased 5.38%, to 1.41 billion people. <clears throat> uh, that compared with an increase of 5.84% in the decade previous. <clears throat> the number also meant China narrowly missed a target it set in 2016 to boost its population to 1.42 billion by 2020. Yes. In recent months, China's state media has been increasingly bleak, bleak on the outlook, you know, talking about how fewer people is a bleak outlook. Uh, yes. Saying the population may actually start to shrink in the next few years. There you go. <clears throat> Some people are claiming that is already st already started. Uh, China has long worried about its population growth as it seeks to bolster its economic rise and boost prosperity. In 2016, China replaced its one-child policy <clears throat> with a two-child limit, but of course, the two-child limit's been thrown out the window and they're doing anything they can <clears throat> to encourage more and more and more babies being born, but fortunately, the actual people making the babies are understanding maybe that's not such a good idea. <clears throat> 
and I've been having this discussion recently, I am still solidly on the sign. I see exactly zero evidence of the New World Order, the mythical they, whoever uh, you want to call them, uh, instituting any sort of depopulation agenda on this planet. Every agenda I see on this planet is breed, baby, breed. Just keep pumping those babies out. Uh, there is nothing in it for the New World Order, the global corporatocracy, to reduce the population of this planet. It, it, it is setting fire to their own foundation. Uh, now, are there a few top echelon one-tenth of one percenters out there who might like to get rid of 99% uh, of the humans on this planet. Uh, probably are. I mean, there's a few uh, people right here on this channel uh, wishing that 99% of people will disappear. As long as I'm on this one, one more time, guys, anytime anybody wants to institute a... I've been saying this for... Well, depending on where you've been listening, for 11 years today on uh, the internet, I have been saying if the New World Order wants to institute a depopulation agenda, you want to get rid of 90% of this planet's population, here's what you do. You, you get rid of fossil fuels. You simply shut down the gas pumps. It could be done in one day. You shut down the grid. Uh, could be done in one day. You shut down the internet. Could be done in one day. You get rid of fossil fuels, the grid, and the internet in the next 24 hours, six weeks from today, 90% of this planet will be dead. The population of this planet, I don't know how much, it's a hell of a lot bigger uh, than it was when I went down this rabbit hole 12 years ago. It is going to be a hell of a lot bigger 12 years from now. At some point, we are going to hit the bottleneck. We are going into the bottleneck. Uh, but I see exactly zero evidence of any depopulation agenda on this planet anywhere. But that's just my reading of the tea leaves. Little dog, what? what do you need to get froggies or what? But we're going to close good old, uh, no, wait a minute, I got one more. We got to go over to the Italian island of Lampedusa. Situation on Italian island of Lampedusa, quote, explosive after 2,000 migrants, we're talking from sub-Saharan Africa, arrive in 24 hours. The situation on the tiny Mediterranean island of Lampedusa is explosive after more than 2,000 migrants landed in just 24 hours as smugglers switch away from rubber dinghies, you know, which send the uh, sub-Saharan Africans to the bottom of the ocean in favor of steel-hulled fishing boats that can carry hundreds of asylum seekers at once. It was the largest number of migrants to arrive on Italian shores in a single day so far this year. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Italians exhausted by the pandemic successive lockdowns and a drop in their GDP of around 9% the past year were in no mood to be welcoming. Yes, 12,000 
uh, migrants have already washed up on this one island this year. What is it? It's early May. 12,000 Sub-Saharan Africans pouring into Italy. Uh, George Maloney, the head of the hard right Brothers of Italy party, called for Italy to organize a, quote, naval blockade to prevent smugglers' boats from reaching land. And there you go. Uh, we will see this. We will see this uh, story repeating itself. More and more, 2,000 per day. Do the math on that one, guys. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to wind up in England. David Attenborough turns 95. Happy birthday to David Attenborough. Yes, and so to celebrate Sir David's birthday, the Independent has given us a few choice David Attenborough quotes. Uh, all right, this is David Attenborough on humanity. <clears throat> Quote, the fact is that no species has ever had such wholesale control over anything on earth, living or dead, as we now have. That lays upon us, whether we like it or not, an awesome responsibility. <clears throat> In our hands now lies not only our own future, but that of all other living creatures with whom we share the earth. Yes, it is going to be humans. We are going to save, save ourselves and every other earthling we share the planet with. Uh, what does he have to say about young people saving the planet? This is a 95-year-old talking about young people. Here's a picture with him and Greta Thunberg. Yes. Young people, they care. Yes. Uh, young people, they care. They know that this world is the world that they're going to grow up in that they're going to spend the rest of their lives in. But I think it's more idealistic than that. They actually believe that humanity, the human species, has no right to destroy and despoil regardless. There you go. It is the young people. It is the Greta Thunbergs that are going to save this planet. Okay, um, let's see, but we're going, uh, let's do one more. Which one shall we pick to close this out? Okay, to close out this roundup, the 95-year-old David Attenborough on humanity's impact on our planet. <clears throat> Take it away, David. Quote, We are at a unique stage in our history. Never before have we had such an awareness, yes, of what we are doing to the planet. And never before have we had the power to do something about that. Mm -hmm. Surely, surely, we all have a responsibility to care for our blue planet, the future of humanity, and indeed all life on Earth now depends on us. There you go, brother. And with that, those wise words from that 95-year-old 
I'm going to exercise my responsibility to take care of my little section of the blue planet and crank up my chainsaw and uh, carve out another campsite up on the hillside for the new hip camp. The grand opening May 28th, the bugs in a jar hip camp, although I'm thinking that I'm going to rename it the Oasis of Freedom hip camp. Uh, what do you guys think? Bugs in a jar or the Oasis of Freedom hip camp will be online. Come see me at uh, wherever, whatever I name it. We would love to have you, but we got to get out and get that chainsaw cranking. I highly suggest you get out there and crank your chainsaw while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, da -da -da. we're done ranting. I know it. You're ready to...